Hello everybody, glad you could make it. My name is Kaylee Ellen and I don't really know how I feel about peach. I have a lot of t-shirts that still need to be washed and this is one of the few remaining that I have. I don't know why I bought this. I'm looking at it on camera and I'm, I'm, not, I'm not digging it, but let's just ignore it and get on with the video. So yes, we're here on yet another Repop video. As you guys know, I am extremely busy right now and I don't really have time to film much else. I'm just gonna to be totally upfront with you. I do have a few things on my list to film, which I will get into in just a minute because a few people did actually ask me about those videos. So I'll get into that in a moment, but today we're going to keep it pretty simple. So a lot of the plants I have to repot, I don't have the pots for because I haven't had time to get them. Today we're going to pop my, and I will pick it up, my gigantic Thai constellation that has suffered a little bit recently from underwatering. Now, I picked out a pot for this Thai. It's currently in my shop. Obviously I'm not in my shop. I forgot to bring it. So I'm going to have to put my Thai in the typical self-watering pots that you see here from the chooser. So I'm gonna do that. I have two different sizes and I don't know which size it's gonna be. I think the biggest part of this is gonna be getting her out of the pot because she's really wedged in there. I can see some root rot where I've watered into the outer pot and the inner pot just kind of sat in a little bit of water. So I can see a little bit of rot down there. It doesn't look too serious, but we need to get her out of the pot and into a new pot. I'm not going to do it like today. I'm going to keep it simple with some soil because I don't have time to wash her off. So I'll get into some questions. I probably have more questions than I do plants today, being that I only have the one plant. So we'll just get into it. I will take my ring off and I will start with a question while I'm putting my gloves on. I got a few questions. I'll start with the video question because a few people have asked me about, I cannot get this off. I think it's the heat. A few people asked me about Anthurium Care video, Red Plant Indexes, and obviously the Choose a Review. Basically the question was when are they coming? What's happening? Honestly, it might be a month to two months yet. I don't really know. I can't give a definitive answer. I know that as soon as things calm down, Red Plan Indexes will resume. Uh, the Lechuza review, I may be able to get out before that. I think that would probably come sooner than a Red Plan Index would. The Anthurium Care video, again, I will probably do towards the end of season because I really like to perfect my care videos because I realize a lot of people go off what I say in those videos, like quite, you know, as gospel. So I want to make sure I get a good, concise video out of that because I know a lot of people will use them. That's basically where we're at with videos. I know it might be uh, repetitive. To some, it might be annoying that I keep doing, you know, hauls, repots, the more simple stuff. But honestly, I can't offer you anything else at the minute. But I will keep you as informed as possible on that. Let's get the tie up. I think I have to cut a leaf off her as well because she's got a yellow leaf and I'm pretty sure it's underwatering again. I'm not very happy about this, but honestly, what can you do? I'm so disorganized today as well, can I just say? I'm actually plugged into my camera. This is a different microphone from the normal one. So if I sound different, that's why I'm so unorganized. It's being a joke it really is you look lucky i even had a battery to film with because they were all just out of charge you won't get to see all of this in the frame i'm going to have to kind of semi hide behind it but this is my huge tie we'll try and move it this these were the wrong plants to put beside me today but that is her beside me there she's very large she does have a yellow leaf which is hello right there i'm going to cut that off i'm going to try and get her out of this pot it's not going to be great viewing obviously because this isn't the best job to do in front of a camera but i will do my best so for starters i guess i'll cut this leaf off because it makes sense off it comes i want to check and you should check in my opinion when you get a yellow leaf on a plant when you cut off the yellow leaf just inspect it you know because this could be a time where you find out if you have pests or something else has happened like is it underwatering is it overwatering or is it spider mites, for example? So given that I've had a spider mite outbreak, I am going to check. And I can't see any spider mites. I think we are good. So I think that damage was underwatering. Obviously, if I get another yellow leaf after doing self-watering, then I'll know there's a problem. So at the minute I can't see any damage, I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna throw this. Right off the bat, damage root out of the pot. This is because, as I mentioned before, I've been watering her and she's been sat in an outer pot and I've had to leave her in extra water because I knew that when I went away, I would be back after it would need watering. So I've kind of done a boo-boo there. I'm pretty prepared for the damage. We'll see. I've got some roots here that are totally just desecrated just because they've dried out because of the under and over watering. So unfortunately, although I don't have the right pot for her, it's really now or never to repot her. I can't wait any longer. So we're just gonna have to repot today. I I have no idea how I'm getting her out of this pot, by the way. This is gonna be very interesting, but 
because I know it's wedged in here, unless all the roots at the bottom have died. Oh my God, that was a very silly thing to do, wasn't it? You know what I might have to do, guys? I might have to take these plants off. As pretty as they look, I might have to actually move them a little bit. Bear with me one moment. It won't look as sexy, but it's got to be done. Another question I've been getting an awful lot, and believe me, I sympathize with you a lot, is when is the Hoyer haul coming? So I have, I can't remember how many Hoyer I said. I haven't counted since. I don't think I've bought any more since when I last told you I had like, God, I don't even know how many I had. Maybe was it 10, 12? I don't know. I haven't bought any more since then, but the Hoyer shipment of all of the rest of the plants, which to be honest is about 10 plants, that hasn't come yet. That is coming from Russia and it hasn't been shipped yet due to the whole COVID thing. So again, I'm still waiting. If you would really like me to do a part one and part two and release a Hoya video now of the ones I have, and then when I get the other half, I can do another Hoya haul. That's totally cool. Let me know if you want me to do that. I'm very happy to. If you could give me an answer below as to which one you'd prefer, I one part or two parts. So whether you prefer to wait and then get a mega haul or just me give you the Hoya haul, that I would do now and then the new one, I can do that as well. So it would be really helpful for me if you left the answer to that in the comments. Obviously, a haul is really easy for me to film right now. So that would be great, but I'm also totally happy to wait if you guys would prefer to wait for, let's just call it a mega haul. So let me know in the comments anyway. Right, I'm gonna just test the water, so to speak, and see how difficult this is to come out. I don't know what I'm gonna do here. A lot of these roots don't look so good, you know. I might have killed them. This is a thing if you, and I don't know if anyone's ever found this out, but if you underwater a plant quite severely and the roots dry up and then obviously you water it again, you will have root rot. It's highly likely. So if that is the case, I'm fully aware of how that's happened. It's because it hasn't been watered. It's dried out way too much and the roots have died. And then I've gone and added water to that. Um, so we will have a damn good look at these roots and see what's happened. I am really surprised that has come out. There is roots left on the pot. That is not a good sign. Yeah, they're, they're mush. I don't know if I ever showed these roots on a video previously, but they were busting out of the pot, like to the point where I didn't know if I was gonna get her out. Obviously she's come right out. These roots are all mush right here. I don't know if you can see this. I might be able to try and zoom in in post editing. It's not really focused on that, it's focused on me, but these aren't very good. So I guess we will just very gently pick these off, cut these off. Um, and we'll do whatever we have to do. Yeah, these are these are fucked, guys. <laughs> these are so fucked. Honestly, we just hate it when this happens. Hopefully it's just the outer roots that have been touching the plastic, but I don't know. So we'll just very slowly just break this apart and I'll answer some questions. It's probably a good thing in hindsight that I'm only doing one plant today because I feel really sorry for her. You can see, I think on camera maybe, that these roots are not a good color and trust me, they just come off in my hands, so. That's really sad. She had the best root system. I have two pots to use and I picked up uh, one that is, I think it's the same size as these. It might be a size up, it might be the same size. And then I picked the size beyond that because I know that Monstera roots are ridiculous and these roots were ridiculous. So I thought, oh shit, I'm gonna need the bigger pot, right? Maybe not, maybe really not. Maybe we are gonna go back to basics. I guess now I know what the yellowing leaf was about. So that's, that's not fun. I mean, this is very wet now, which is great, except it's not great because I've lost a ton of fucking root. Right, let's get on with some questions. So I got a few um, just to kind of summarize the questions I got. A lot of shop questions again, stuff about my job, actually, my old job. And uh, there was a, for some reason, and I don't know if I'm like, I've missed something, but I got a lot of questions. Oh my God. Some solid root. <sighs> it's gonna be a very sad video. Please mourn with me. I got a lot of questions. Guys, there's no roots left. I promise you these were busting out of the pot. I'm sure I've shown this on previous videos where these were busting out of the pot and they are fucking gone. Sorry to put a bummer on the video, but <laughs> I'm really pissed off about that. Anyway, let's just get through it and get this thing recovered. So for some reason, I got a lot of questions on, what was it, the question that was asked? It was asked in many different ways, but it was, do you think the plant community is turning into the beauty community with regards to drama, etc.? And I've gotta be honest, I feel like I've maybe missed something. I don't know if you are referring to Facebook or Facebook groups or stuff with shops and stuff like that. I 
don't know because I, I if that's if something's happened I feel like I'm out of the loop there and I don't quite know what has prompted the question if you know what I mean but I did get a few questions on it so where to start I do think the plant community has changed in some ways but in a lot of ways for me it hasn't like I I did say this a while ago in a certain video in January if I recall but the plant community is not full of drama but there is drama there um that didn't go down very well needless to say people didn't take that very well at the time um I'm gonna cut these thread-like roots by the way just to get them out of the way because I'm pretty sure they can't really take a border they feel kind of like hair before it's gonna snap so that's not good I'm gonna cut these just so you know what I'm doing yeah so I mentioned in January that you know the plant community isn't without its shit really either that's behind the scenes or sellers or just to be honest anything um it didn't go down very well and perhaps Maybe I didn't deliver it right. Maybe it wasn't the right time to say something. Oh my God, there is no root on this plant at all. Sorry, but there isn't. Um, it, it just, it didn't go down well. So maybe people weren't ready to accept that. Maybe that's not the right word, but I feel like people weren't ready to know that the plant community is honestly guys it's just like any other community i don't think the plant community is turning into the the beauty guru the you know the makeup community i think every community is like this i think if you had a community that was about collecting i don't want to say stamps that's like so obvious but just just any other sector on youtube the gaming community probably has its drama the commentary community has its drama the car community probably has its drama it's not the subject matter it's just people people don't get on people do things people do things that other people don't like i often get not accused of being negative but a lot of people say to me you know you're very negative about all this stuff and it's like and i know i share an opinion with pam on this um, Pam's Pretty Plants. I'm not being negative about it. I'm just being realistic and I'm just being honest. Like I speak in these videos and I don't know if people think it's to like cause drama and shit. It's honestly not. I promise you, I promise you on my entire heart and my entire being, it's not about that. I'm genuinely just speaking honestly. I promise you that. I'm not trying to start any shit, but you can't, sometimes you, you just have to be honest and you can't not stop shit and i'm not talking i'm not making this about me here i'm saying in general in the plant community that's why this is happening i feel like a lot of people are more comfortable with being a bit more honest a lot of people are more comfortable with showing behind the scenes stuff you've got that on the maybe the youtuber side i would say and then you've got stuff on the seller side for example not even the rare plant market but the plant market has absolutely gone crazy with covid19 right and loads of people are starting shops and because loads of people are starting shops, there's a lot of different methods they are starting shops and it's causing some drama. Some people have been stealing plants from nurseries. Some people have opened shops with the promise of delivering, you know, X, Y, and Z products at X, Y, and Z prices at X, Y, and Z times, and they haven't happened yet. Um, that's not a new thing, but it's become more prolific. We've had a lot of racism as well in the plant community that's unearthed a lot of shit generally and caused a bit of a shit storm and people are realizing that, you know, certain shops view things as being political and it's not, it's, you know, Black Lives Matter is a human rights issue. And we've had all of that as well. And that needs to continue and that needs to get talked about and all the rest. But we've had a lot of stuff happen this year. Admittedly, this is after I said something <laughs> in January and this isn't quite what I meant. But the plant community, honestly, I believe, I really believe it is like any other community. I just feel like a lot of people viewed plants as an escape. A lot of people don't view EG makeup as an escape. Some people do, don't go wrong, it is a craft. But generally plants have been more of a, they've had more of a Zen association. And I believe that with all this shit generally popping up everywhere, it's, a lot of people are, are not happy that it doesn't have the same Zen association anymore. But yeah, to summarize, because I could really go on about this all day, if you couldn't already tell, I think it's not turning into the beauty community. I think there's been bits and pieces of that there all along because we're all people. 
we all have different ways of doing things, seeing things, saying things, going about things. And that's how it is. I do think the rare plant market specifically has kind of influenced a lot of issues um, in that because people are getting a little bit more aggressive about things. So there's more reasons to argue and fight and everything else. But I do just think it's more people and circumstance. I don't think, I, I don't think plants are responsible. That's a silly thing to say. Of course they aren't. Yeah, to summarize, some people don't want to hear it, but I'm going to say it anyway. It's like any other community, there is shit behind the scenes. And there is still a lot more shit behind the scenes than even subscribers and everybody else see. And I know a few YouTubers that can attest to that. Do you know what I mean? So, no, it's like every other community. There's no need to be dramatic about anything. It's just, it's how it is. Things happen, you know? So, we will just have a quick recap on these roots. This is a really sorry turnout for this plant. You can tell by the size of this plant, if I hold it behind me, there's the root. You can just see how much root this plant has lost and I'm very sad about it. So let's get this plant into a new pot. I guess connected to that, and I will answer it because it is kind of connected, is what is your opinion on the rare plant hype, um, auctions, etc. I didn't realize because as many of you know, and I'm not happy about, I haven't traded, mainly during COVID, I haven't really traded. I didn't notice that the prices on auctions were going this high. For example, I can't remember how much I sell a philodendron El Choco Red for in my shop, but the price of that, that one plant, has gone up substantially. And I, it's weird because I remember people used to complain that my prices were so high in my shop. And I'm seeing auctions now on Facebook and eBay. Facebook's terrible for it. Um, small cuttings of these plants, like a one leaf cutting, is going for the same price I sold a full plant for. I'm like, shit, when did this happen? Like, what happened? I've been so busy, same thing with the whole drama thing. I've been kind of out of the loop a little bit. So I'm just kind of like, shit, is this, is this COVID? Or is it because um, more people are getting into plants? But then again, I feel like more people are getting into plants because of COVID. So, don't know. I can tell you that the prices have gone up a lot for people that don't know. A lot of plant prices have doubled to be quite honest with you. Now cuttings of plants, one to two leaf cuttings, are selling for the same price that a full plant from most sellers shops would have sold for, which creates a problem. This could also be reflective of the problem I've had, which is that my suppliers can't give me these plants because they're not there. So I do think because of the boom, because of COVID, because of just all of it, there isn't the plants that were available before, they aren't there now. Not only that, but we have a lot of new shops popping up selling rare plants, right? So I can tell you as a shop owner, supply is massively dwindling and cost prices, honestly, for me, some plants have doubled in cost price and some plants have trebled in cost price. So it is not good. So you've probably witnessed shops put up their prices, but in defense of any seller, the prices have gone up. So it's hard and I, I don't, I honestly don't know what the, the, not what the market is like, but the general feeling out there is like at the minute for plants, because honestly, I will admit, I haven't really been involved in it because I've been so busy, but I can tell you the price has gone up. I can tell you that there is a lot of demand there. So it's not surprising to me to see plants going on Facebook at these prices or even at these prices. And that is because people, the plant is there, right? There's a chance to get it because shops aren't stocking it, shops can't get it. So the only people that have got it now are the people that bought it last year when it was less money and now they can propagate. So the market is really kind of changing. So shops are gonna have to put their prices up if they haven't already. I'm saying this and I haven't looked at other shops at all. I don't actually follow other shops, believe it or not. Um, but shops are going to have to put their prices up. I will have to put my prices up. Obviously, I'm not going to sell my plants that I can't get a hold of. I can't get new ones. I'm not realistically going to sell them, guys, for the price that I did, because clearly the market value has gone up. And I know me saying this is going to anger some people. I think some people will understand this. This isn't just me, by the way. This is kind of on behalf of sellers. Some people will understand this and some people are going to be very angry at this. But it's the game. I know it sounds horrible, but it is the game. It's why I don't speak about prices on my channel, guys. 
they fluctuate, so there's no point. There's no point in me saying how much I paid for something because when I buy something in, it's inflated massively 48 hours later anyway. If I tell you that I bought this plant here, this Philodendron Glorious for $100, say, it might have doubled in 48 hours because I've mentioned it on my channel and everything else, do you know what I mean? So I'm always as careful as I can to not feed into the hype too much. Don't get me wrong, I accept the responsibility I have sitting here running. I think it could be the only rare houseplant channel on YouTube. I don't know. I don't know how many people are doing it. Specifically just rare. Um, but there's a lot of responsibility there. And I know that it's a delicate time for not just rare plants, but even semi-rare plants are kind of, they're kind of shooting up. So my thoughts are, it's shit. It's the game. It's how it works. It's supply and demand. And I'm part of it too. I'm in, a, I'm in a different part because I'm selling, but I also owe it to you guys to be responsible and to tell you what's going on on our side so you kind of understand. But supply is low. Supply is low. A lot of nurseries now are selling things for retail prices, say, and they weren't doing that before. So for regular shops that aren't in, say, Indonesia, Thailand, Ecuador, uh, Philippines, wherever people are getting plants from, we're having to compete with them now. So a lot of people are buying plants from there, their prices have gone up. I want you to know that. That's no one's just decided to get in on the hype and put prices up. Supply is really, really low. So that's kind of that. I try, as I mentioned before, I try not to mention prices on the channel because guys, they're irrelevant. They're so irrelevant. I can't tell you. They really are. Like, for example, right, the Oblika video, the famous video I did on Oblika before people knew that there was a massive difference with Oblika and Adansonia and everything else. I put the market value of Oblika at that time in that video. I'm pretty sure I said it was about $800 to $1,000. That's bullshit now. The value has trebled. You can get a fully mature plant for two to 3,000, easily 3,000. Prices don't mean much because the market fluctuates so much. So I don't include prices for that reason. There's just no point. There's no point putting prices down because these things go out of date. Do you know what I mean? I sold some plants last year in my shop, okay? I can't get a hold of them now. I sold a few different types of philodendron, for example. I can't get a hold of them. I can't even say what these philodendron are in a video because if I, I know that if I say what they are, the price goes up even more. Do you know what I'm saying? Like, I can't even tell you what they are because the price is going to inflate again if I say something. So I'm trying to be as delicate as I can. Believe me, I really am trying. The rare plant thing has gone a bit nuts. In some cases, it is silly. In some cases, people are getting very ripped off. Like the last video I did on the Florida Gross Mint thing. Yeah. <sighs> I don't know what to suggest to people that are in the situation where they want these plants and the prices are like that, other than to wait. You can wait it out, you cannot. If you wait it out, you risk the prices going up more. Just this is not me speaking as a seller, this is me speaking as just someone into plants and being logical. You could wait, the prices might go up more. They might come crashing down. I don't know, right? I don't know, really don't know. So I don't know what to suggest to do. I don't know whether to suggest to buy plants or to wait at all. I'm not involved in this right now because I'm not selling right now. So, and I, I, to be honest, I'm kind of glad that I haven't really sold anything over this period because I'm trying to see what happens with prices for one thing because I don't know where they're going to sell. It's just like, what the hell? What the hell is going on? So that's that. I'm just putting in some soil in here, by the way. Um, I'm a bit worried about these roots in this part. Obviously, I failed to mention this because I was talking, but I've already assembled this. I assembled this for a previous video. Um, I can't remember what it was for, but I didn't get it. I didn't end up using it. So that's why it's assembled. There is already Lechuza Pond in the bottom, in a little bag. And I've just put some, um, some of my Arid mix in there as well. So yeah, sorry, I'm giving like really long winded answers today. I'm not meaning to. I just feel like I haven't chatted to you guys in ages, ages and ages and ages. Cause obviously I'm not that active on Instagram right now. That will change by the way, but just give me some time. That will change. That's kind of my thoughts on that. <laughs> That's garbled as hell. I am so sorry. Let's go for some more simple questions, shall we? So I'm not just answering three questions in this video, because believe it or not, I do actually write these questions down. So what have we got? One easy question straight off the bat. I got asked if myself and Ben were business partners and the straightforward answer to that is he is currently making that transition. So yes and no. 
I guess that's not even straightforward, but we are making that transition right now. He is helping me out a lot with the shop and getting to grips with generally how I do things and how it works. So no, not officially business partners yet, but we're on our way there. We're making progress towards that. Another really easy question is, is your shop an online shop or can you visit in person? Honestly, it's an online shop and it's probably always going to be an online shop. I don't have any plans to make it a retail shop for a ton of reasons. Um, not bad reasons, just I don't have any plans to do that at all. Um, how does, silly does this look? You can't even see this. I'm, I do apologize that you can't see this, but it's a tall ass plant. So I'm going to have to put this up here. This is a big ugly container of substrate. I think it's going to have to be here as ugly as it is because it's the best way to get some from here into here. My shop is and probably always will be online only. So that won't stop me giving you the occasional tour of the shop. I think the next tour, I'm probably gonna do it seasonally as I would with my houseplants in here. I'll probably do it seasonally and you'll get a full tour just like the last one. But yeah, it, you can't walk in there. Uh, it will be online only. So I do get a lot of messages asking me, oh, like, are you open? Can I come visit? The answer is permanently no. You cannot, unfortunately. It is online only. Oh, I'm so worried about this plant, you know. I hope it's going to be okay. If I lose it, I lose it, I suppose. I think we might lose some more leaves on this yet just because it's so big and beautiful. Now it's gotten a root system. Um, plus I've now repotted it and given it more shock. So if I lose it, I lose it. But obviously I'll keep you updated on this little thing. I'm so gutted. If I was just maybe a week earlier, I don't think this would have happened, or two weeks earlier. I think we would have been fine. But be careful when you buy rare plants. Make sure you can uh, look after them. Although obviously this plant ain't really rare. It's just in high demand. Um, it's difficult making that distinction sometimes because when I say rare generally, I do mean kind of commercially. I don't mean botanically in the wild. If I do mean botanically in the wild, I will usually say something along those lines. Um, a lot of the time, if I don't know how rare something is, I'll just say I don't know. For example, the King of Clarinevium that I hauled the other week. Um, don't know how rare it is. Don't know. I don't know how many nurseries have it. I know it's highly variable anyway, so so that they vary so much, it's, it's hard to count them. Do you know what I mean? Because it looks different, so. I'm just going to pot it like that. I don't even want to put full soil in here, you know. I really don't want to do it. I might not do it and plant it really low. You can't see in here right now. But there is not a lot of soil and I'm debating keeping it that way because honestly, I think it might be safer so we don't get overwatering happening. Yeah, I feel like I'm, I'm waffling a lot today. I really do apologize for that. Um, the next report I do, I feel like I've got a really good story time to tell you, by the way. So recently, my beautiful friend Pam has been going through a tough time. And long story short, I teamed up with another Pam. I did actually team up with Pammy's Planty Things and I we, we kind of worked together to send her some flowers. And oh my God, what a shit show, let me tell you. Um, if you want to hear the story about that, it will be a little bit ranty, the same as the sticker story, by the way. Let me know in the comments below and I will I will tell that story, whether that's repotting or it's in just a story time video. If you'd like it in that format, I can totally do that for you. And I'll, I'll show you some stuff, I guess. I know that uh, other Pam is wanting to do a story time on it, I think. I don't know. I'll check with it. Um, so let me know if you want to hear about that, because honestly, I'm still annoyed. I'm really annoyed. I will always be annoyed. I don't think I'm ever going to get over that, if I'm honest. It's not a lot to do. I'm not going to put any more soil in there, guys, because I just, I have a fucking real bad feeling about this. I really do. I'm going to leave it like that, I think. So the summary on this plant is roots, real fucked, real fucked. I'm sure I might be able to find it in a previous video. I don't know. I had a shot of how insane the roots were. Um, and they're just not there anymore. And I'm real sad because they're all in here. So that needs chucked out. I think we might get some yellow leaves on it. We might get a lot of yellow leaves on it. I will just keep you informed the best I can. So yeah, back to what I was saying. If you want a really cool story time in either repot format or regular story time format, I can totally do that for you. Let me know. I think I would prefer to do it in a regular format just because I feel like I can give you more on it and I can show you stuff. But let me know, anyway. I have a few questions here, to be honest. I had them wrote down. I might leave them for next time or no doubt people will ask me them again. 
I have does the shop make you happy? I have, well, I also have what makes you happy. I have tips for beginners on rare plants. I have, do you regret not doing your programming job anymore? I'll do the last two because I feel like they're going to be the most interesting. Uh, very briefly on my programming job. I do miss that. Uh, I miss that a lot, actually. I do, obviously, what I do now is just a world apart from what I used to do with... Um, oh, I'll show you my ZZ while we talk, because she's grown. She's rooted in, by the way, she's totally safe. Got a little bit of yellow on her, where she suffered from just bad roots, but she's, she's going strong. I'm pretty happy about it. I want to get some more into the shop and get those out to you guys. But yeah, so me and my ZZ will tell you about how I feel about my old job. I miss my old job, but I miss... I miss what it was. I miss what I thought it was. And this is not gonna make sense to anybody unless you were there. I know there's two people that may or not be watching this that know exactly what I'm talking about. But I miss the old days before things changed and before things went a little bit more sour. I'm not gonna shit on anybody from previous employment because I'm just not. But I miss what it was. I miss what it was before things changed. Um, a lot of attitudes changed in the workplace. There was, I don't know how to say this without saying something. There was a little bit of a divide going on, you could say. Um, so I, I left for many reasons. I left not just because of the shop. I did leave because I wasn't happy there. It was actually me not being happy there that was the motivator to leave. It wasn't actually the shop. Um, so I left that. I, I remember I, I cried about leaving that job for like, I don't know, a, a week maybe? I remember I was filming like a couple of days after I quit and I had to film a video. It was probably a repot, it might have been something else. And I was struggling to put my makeup on because I was crying through it because I just, I, it was like going through a breakup. It was really, really weird to me. Um, but I've kind of broken down a lot of why I felt that way. And I think a lot of it, I missed the people in particular. It was like going through a breakup in that sense. But I just missed what it was. I missed what it was before it all went sour. And I can't elaborate on it because I'm sat on a channel with 80,000 people watching. So I can't elaborate on it and I don't want to be disrespectful to anybody. But I'm pleased I left, but I miss the challenge of making something like I mainly worked on artificial intelligence as a C++ programmer. So I did games, but that's kind of what I did. I did AI, that was always my passion. I did that in uni. Both of my dissertations were on AI. My first dissertation was on an AI using the concept of limited information, which is basically an AI that looks for you, but he doesn't just get your location. He doesn't cheat, he has to do it without cheating. That was my first AI project. And after that, I did a flock simulation a Reynolds-based flock. And I have a channel, actually, a programming channel that has all my old work on it still. I, I don't know if people have found that or not, but it's there anyway. Um, I miss all of that. I miss I miss making stuff. I miss a, a good brain teaser, a good project, because this is cool and all, and I don't get me wrong, I'm living my best life right now, despite working hard. But there's a lot of that that I miss. I don't get to create a thing. I don't get to solve a puzzle or problem. I just, I do what I do. So my life has changed in a lot of ways. Um, I'm ultimately happier, but there's obviously aspects that I miss. I sometimes feel that, you know, did I do all that training and spend all that money on student loans for nothing? I don't think I have. I think I'll, I'll always have that and I'm proud of that, but I'm not fully over leaving the industry yet. I still have thoughts about it, but at the end of the day, I have a better quality of life now and that's all that matters, right? I can always change and do something else. It, it doesn't have to be goodbye forever. So, yeah. And I really miss the two people that I used to work with in particular, Scott and Johnny. Um, we still need to go for a drink, guys. It's, it's fucking ridiculous now. It's been so long. We really need to do that. Uh, as soon as Manchester lifts the, uh, the ban, anyway, on going out to the pub, I think, I don't know. That's the worst part. I haven't actually been following anything, no news, no nothing. So I don't even know what's going on anymore. I should really check that. Although I'm not going out either, so it's fine. But yeah. The other question, what was it? Yes, before I go, sorry, I know this is a lot of talking, but I really feel the need to catch up with you guys and just talk to you because I feel like I haven't been. So the last question I'm gonna answer is, 
are there any tips for beginners on rare plants? <sighs> I'll, I'll maybe take you through how I got started with rare plants because I feel that it's somewhat useful. So my first rare plant, funny enough, <laughs> was the Monstera Thai Constellation. Um, that was the first thing I bought that was of value and it was rare. And I bought a mini Thai Constellation, probably about as big as this for, it was about 65 Great British Pounds. It was before they really boomed. I looked it up. I found out that Monstera in particular were very tough. For example, they didn't, I mean, I know I've just watched one rot, but if we could forget about that for a second, they're pretty tough. They are humidity tolerant, they're this, they're that. Um, so I did research on that. I knew I wanted a variegated one. And then I did research on Monstera Deliciosa variegated small form, also known as Albo Borsigiana, the thing, the big brute behind me here. And I learned that the variegation on that could revert. It wasn't stable. So you did have to work to keep it. At the time, I didn't even know what work that was. I had no fucking idea. I don't want to spend all this money and then lose it, right? That's, that's the last thing anybody wants to do when they're dealing with stuff like this. So that was one thing that I, I realized pretty quickly. And I realized that the tie had variegation that was stable. So although it wasn't in some senses as attractive as the elbow, I knew that it was safer for me and I would be happy with that. So I did actually do a video on this like last year. That's kind of what inspired the whole video on the two different types and which one you should go for, because I went through that myself. I researched quite a lot before I paid for that plant. I also knew that it would be okay to cut it and it would be reasonably easy to propagate. So that's another good thing along with figuring out, you know, do you want this plant because it's variegated? If it's variegated, do you know the pitfalls of variegation? Is the variegation stable? Is it not stable? There's tons of philodendron that are stably variegated. For example, philodendron Jose Bono is a good one because it's variegated, it grows very easy, you can propagate it, but you don't have to worry about it. Same thing as the tie. The, the Jose Bono is the same as a tie. It's just a big paddly philodendron. So look for something like that. Look for something potentially that is easy to propagate. And that's for two reasons. One, if you'd like to sell cuttings, go for it. Great. If you'd like to learn to take cuttings, great. Do you know what I'm saying? Also, if there's a problem with your plant and you have to cut it like root rot to the max, do you know what I mean? Let's just pretend that that rot went further up the nodes and there's two nodes left. You'd be able to cut that and maybe save your plant. So I'd look for something that's easy to propagate. If it's variegated, look for stable variegation, i.e., I can't think of this off the bat, but Philodendron Jose Bono is a good one. Monstera Thai Constellation is a good one. They're very, very good. I would stay away from Anthurium to start because I find them a little bit more difficult. I realize my advice is catered towards aroids, but obviously I kind of mainly do aroids. Stay away from ferns, generally. Don't bother with a fucking fern. I don't care how good looking it is. Ferns, for me anyway, are a bit of a struggle. Just look for something easy to grow. I don't know how easy it is to find out that information. I'm not trying to plug my own videos. I have a couple of videos on that. General consensus is how often you see them popping up on the market would be an indication of how easy they are to propagate. So however often you see them in plant auctions would be a good indicator. Now, there's loads of different types of Syngonium. If you want to get into your rare shit, go for a rarer Syngonium because they grow super fast. They're super tolerant. They plump up really quickly after shipping. They're just great fucking plants. So go for one of them as well. So there's a good philodendron, a good Monstera, and most Syngonium will do you pretty well as well. So there's some ideas. Just discover the type of plant you fancy and try and find out what are easy growers, what are easy to care for in there. And then look for something that doesn't break the bank. Although a lot of things do at the minute as we've got over. Maybe if you want me to do a full on video on advice or things you should know when getting into red plants, maybe that's a video I could do. If anybody's interested in that and you're still actually watching this garbled mess, then let me know down below and I might do that as well. Similarly, I may as well end the video now. If you have any other video suggestions that you might like to see me do, I'd be happy to consider them and make videos on them because obviously I'm here to make content that you guys enjoy. So if there's something you'd love to know, like for example, the shipping video that I did earlier on this year, everyone screamed at me for that. So I made that, I had loads of fun making that and I think it's been useful. So if there's anything anybody wants to know, please leave a comment and I will be sure to take a look. So that is my thoughts. I'm sorry, I'm extremely chatty. But I miss you guys. I miss interacting with you guys. I haven't done it for a while. It, that will return. I promise you it will return. We just got to go a little bit longer yet. Don't really know what else to say. This is my ZZ. Take a good look. It's cute. I was selling these, by the way, on my shop 
earlier this year, maybe March time, I think a plant like this would have cost maybe about 170. I have since, and this is on the topic we talked about earlier, I've seen two leaf cuttings of variegated ZZ. Not as variegated as this one, go for the same price. What? What happened there? I don't even know what happened. Um, shit, that's all I can say. Anyway, I will love you and leave you. Please leave any suggestions you would like to leave down below. If you'd like to see any more of my content, then please subscribe. And I love you all. I miss you terribly. And I will see you next week. Bye.